Hello everyone. Welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more. Today's topic is ameloblastoma or adamantinoma. It is the most important uh, topic in oral pathology that is coming under odontogenic tumors. So in odontogenic tumors we have seen uh, AOT that is uh, adenomatoid odontogenic tumor and the next one was CEOT calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor and the most important one is amyloblastoma so all are odontogenic tumors it is dental related tissues are the cause or the uh, origin it is originated from dental related tissues now let's uh, move on to amyloblastoma or adamantinoma From the name itself, we get an idea about the tumor that is amyloblastoma. So amylo means uh, we know amyloblast, so it is related to enamel, and blasto means uh, germ. So it is originating from enamel tissues. That is why it got amyloblastoma. And another name is adamantinoma because it is. Uh, adamantinoma another uh, tumor which is seen in the longer bones the histological similarity with that type of tumors with the amyloblastoma gave gave this name to amyloblastoma that is adamantinoma so the histological similarities between the adamantinoma of longer bones so it got two names amyloblastoma or adamantinoma so Robinson defined this amyloblastoma as unicentric, non-functional, intermittent in growth, anatomically benign and clinically persistent. So it is a unicentric, non-functional, intermittent in growth, anatomically benign and clinically persistent tumor. So we can classify it under two headings. One is clinical classification, another one is histological classification. In clinical classification, the most common is central variant, that is the intraosseous type. So in intraosseous type, we have two types. That is the most common one, that is multicystic variant, that is conventional or multicystic or solid type tumors. And the second one is unicystic, that is in central or intraosseous variant. The next one is extraosseous or peripheral. And another type is pituitary amyloblastoma. And the last one is malignant amyloblastoma. This is clinical classification. Central, peripheral, pituitary, malignant. In central, we have multicystic and unicystic. And multicystic is the most common type. In histological type, it is based on the histological uh, appearance follicular plexiform acanthomatous granular basal cell and desmoplastic so it is follicular plexiform acanthomatous granular basal cell and desmoplastic now let's see what are the etiological factors for amyloblastoma the common etiologies are traumatic episodes so the trauma happening to uh, uh, these structures and extraction, cystectomy and various uh, type of fractures, infection and uh, dietary deficiency, especially vitamin D and lack of protein intake and viral infections. So all these could be etiological factors for amyloblastoma. So it could be a trauma extraction, cystectomy, fractures, infection, vitamin D, deficiency, lack of protein intake and viral infection. So, so in pathogenesis, it is believed that it is derived either from cell rest of enamel organ, remnants of dental lamina, Hardwick's sheath, epithelial rest of molasses. So all these could be the originating uh, factor because it is originating from enamel tissues and also could be epithelium of odontogenic cysts most commonly the dentigerous cyst and odontoma and also it could be from basal cell of 
surface epithelium of jaw and uh, it could be due to the disturbance of developing enamel organ and also from heterotopic epithelium of pituitary gland so that is about pathogenesis so we discussed uh, the classification that is clinical and histological type etiology and pathogenesis so the clinical features include that most commonly seen between 20 to 50 years of age group and there is no gender predilection it is both the genders are equally affected there is no predilection for a particular gender but the black um, race people are more affected than the white race and the mandible is uh, almost um, affected by 80 percentage cases than maxilla only 20 percentage are restricted to maxilla and mandibular molars areas are more prone for ameloblastoma compared to the anterior or premolar areas while moving on to the signs and symptoms it is a slow growing painless hard and non-tender avoid swelling okay it is a very slowly growing painless hard non-tender avoid swelling which enlarges in size as it causes little discomfort in early stage so at the early stage it is very asymptomatic it does not cause any pain so any other symptoms so it slowly slowly it enlarges to become a ovoid swelling and large mass so facial asymmetry will be a problem there will be mobility of teeth and exfoliation and the dentures will be ill-fitting because of this enlarged size of the maxilla or the mandible and pain or parasitia if any nerve is impinged we have various nerves in these areas we have inferior alveolar nerve we have mandibular nerve we have facial nerve so parasitia will be there um, affected there will be parasitia or pain and there will be inability to occlude and there will be ulcerations so it is a slowly growing painless mass now because there will be very dis little discomfort in the early stages it's con so it continuously grows uh, unless it shows any very clinical evident symptoms in absence of treatment if it is left untreated what happens it will become extremely disfiguring fungating and ulcerative mass with eggshell cracking and fluctuation so it keep on increasing if it is not treated so there will be disfiguring and uh, fungating and it will become very ulcerative and there will be eggshell cracking uh, and there will be fluctuation so the palpitation elicit heart sensation on and or crepitus also will be there so crepitus or heart sensation on palpitation also will be seen if it is not treated so it is not an encapsulated uh, tumor and it invades the surrounding tissue and the bone destruction is a very common feature in ameloblastoma also root resorption because it is continuously growing and it invades the surrounding tissues the surrounding bones will be destroyed the root resorption will be there so what happens if it is in case of maxilla so it is commonly affecting tuberosity it causes nasal obstruction proptosis of eye damage to the vital structure and it involves cranial base so there will be gross facial distortion if it is in the maxilla uh, maxillary bone mural ameloblastoma is nothing but ameloblastoma from a dentigerous cyst so the histological features it has tall columnar cell hyperchromatic nucleus palisaded nucleus reverse polarity of nuclei and subnuclear vesicle formation so this is the histological features so ameloblastoma it is a uh, lengthier topic so we have seen uh, the basic features and clinical features signs and symptoms what happens if it is not treated and in case of maxilla and about histology parts now we have various histological types of uh, ameloblastoma now let's see the histological classification of ameloblastoma 
so in histologic type so it is divided into six types follicular plexiform acanthomatous granular basal cell and desmoplastic so it is based on the histological picture or histological detailing of ameloblastoma so we have seen based on the clinical features also so now let's see one by one so in follicular pattern it is all uh, explaining the histological pictures so it's not very easy to draw and explain it anyway uh, let me explain it uh, without picture so when you're writing for exam always keep pictures for any syndrome the histological explaining requires pictures so let's see the details follicular type the small discrete islands of tumor cells with peripheral cuboidal or columnar cells nuclei will be polarized and it resembles a ameloblast ameloblast we know the enamel forming cells and cyst formation is relatively common stellate reticulum like cells prominently enclosed by columnar or cuboidal cells so it has nuclei polarized with peripheral columnar cells and the cyst formation is common in follicular type of ameloblastoma the second one is plexiform the cells that is ameloblast like cells arranged in irregular masses okay so here we have small discrete islands of tumor cells here it is irregular masses and network of interconnecting strands of cells and each strand is bound bounded by a columnar cell the columnar cell is common in all type of ameloblastoma so between this stellate reticulum we have less prominent tissues compared to the follicular ameloblastoma so the stellate re reticulum like tissues is less prominent and here it is more, more prominent uh, whereas plexiform it is less prominent and areas of cystic degeneration is also common acanthomatous type the cells occupying the position of stellate reticulum undergo squamous metaplasia so stellate reticulum like cells are present all the types so acanthomatous it is the name itself saying acanthomatous we know what is acantho uh, lysis we have seen in uh, pemphigus so acanthomatous is a cell uh, to cell adhesion so here we are getting a squamous metaplasia and keratin formation or keratin pearls is seen whereas the granular cells it is marked transformation of stellate reticulum uh, reticular cells it becomes a coarse granular eosinophilic appearance uh, type with peripheral columnar and also hyperchromatism and also reverse polarity is also seen the basal cell type is why it is known as basal cell uh, type uh, basal cell ameloblastoma because it resembles basal cell carcinoma of skin that is bcc and it is the rarest form of ameloblastoma that is histologic type and we can see hyperchromatic um, less columnar which is arranged in sheets without peripheral uh, palisading nature so that is about basal cell the desmoplastic is we have dense collagen stroma which is hypocellular and hyalinized which is grow in thin uh, strands and uh, cords of epithelium which uh, proliferation seems to be compressed and fragmented by hyalinized stroma so in desmoplastic we have a collagen stroma which is hypocellular and hyalinized and this proliferation uh, compresses and fragments the hyalinized stroma so this proliferation will compress and it make uh, the stroma uh, fragmented uh, appearance in desmoplastic so it is uh, more of a content uh, in ameloblastoma uh, if it is asked for a very uh, 
longer question that is 14 mark question you can uh, build up the content by writing this histological type that is follicular plexiform acanthomatous granular basal cell and desmoplastic so every type you need to have a key point so follicular type it is uh, like uh, nuclei is polarized and it resembles amyloid blast plexiform it is uh, less prominent follicular amyloid blast that is stellate reticulum type tissue is less prominent here in acanthomatous there is squamous metaplasia in granular cells the stellate reticulum becomes coarse granule granular or eosinophilic appearance in basal cell it looks like basal cell carcinoma desmoplastic this compression and fragmentation of hyaluronic stroma will be there so most of the features are same for all but it differs that's why it got this name so from the name itself we get an idea uh, how it differs so that is about histology histology type of ameloblastoma uh, the next variety is unicystic ameloblastoma this we had seen uh, in clinical classification where we had a uh, multicystic that is very common unicystic is uh, not very common type so unicystic ameloblastoma which is uh, nothing but a single cystic cavity uh, unlike the multicystic ameloblastoma it is seen in very younger group that is around 20 years and the gender predilection is same as uh, multicystic the male and female has uh, equal uh, chances of getting this um, unicystic and it is most commonly seen in 90 percentage of uh, in mandible and that also in posterior part and it is uh, typically surrounds the crown of unerupted third molar okay so third molar uh, associated uh, ameloblastoma is unicystic one and it has basically three types that is luminal intraluminal and mural okay so uh, luminal is nothing but the tumor is confined to the luminal surface of the cyst by fibrous connective tissue partially or totally so this is luminal type it is confined to the luminal surface of the cyst by fibrous connective tissue intraluminal the tumor nodules projects from the cystic lining the tumor nodules projects from cystic lining and the mural one is the tumor infiltrates the fibrous cystic wall so these are the three types of unicystic ameloblastoma in mural type the tumor infiltrates a fibrous cystic wall and uh, coming to the radiographic features so radiographic features uh, unilocular or multilocular radiolucency can be seen and there is a striking radiographic appearance in unicystic ameloblastoma or ameloblastoma that is honeycomb or soap bubble appearance okay so honeycomb or soap bubble appearance so it will be like compartments compartment soap bubble we know how soap bubble appears all will be clubbed together a bunch of soap bubbles so the multilocular radiolucency with compartmentalized appearance due to the bony septa so there will be radiolucency a big radiolucency but there will be compartmentalization due to the bone septum in between so it gives a honeycomb appearance or a soap bubble appearance that is a characteristic radiographic feature of unicystic ameloblastoma now uh, we have investigation that is mostly the radiographs will be taken and we can go for biopsy and also ct mri or ultrasound so apart from unicystic ameloblastoma we have uh, malignant ameloblastoma pituitary ameloblastoma and peripheral ameloblastoma which are not uh, very much important so peripheral ameloblastoma is like very it is very rare type which develops in soft tissues of gingiva and mucosa and it is non invasive 
uh, whereas pituitary amyloblastoma is like uh, it is also known as Radke's pouch tumor which involves neoplasma of CNS uh, whereas malignant amyloblastoma it is a malignant transformation of um, normal amyloblastoma which is a very very rare lesion so those are the three uh, types which we have seen in classification a malignant pituitary and peripheral amyloblastoma now how do we uh, go with the treatment so what are the treatment options we have uh, many treatment options that is radical and conservative surgical excision end block resection segmental resection curettage chemical and electrocautery chemotherapy and radiation so simple excision or uh, nucleation is also there so if we have uh, the peripheral amyloblastoma we can do a simple excision uh, enucleation or curettage is in peripheral amyloblastoma it is the removal of uh, tumor by scraping it from the surrounding normal tissue so that is uh, an enucleation or curettage end block resection end block resection is a removal of tumor with a rim of uninvolved bone but maintaining the continuity of jaw so in end block resection we are removing uh, a rim a rim of uninvolved bone but we will continue or maintain the uh, the jaw it will not be completely or it will not be uh, segmented next one is segmental resection it is removal of a segment of maxilla or mandible up to the including hemisection or more so in block resection it will not be segmented only a part of normal bone will be removed in segmental resection the segment of maxilla or mandible uh, removed it, it may include hemi maxillectomy or hemi mandibulectomy and this is the most commonly used treatment because it has very less chance of recurrence segmental resections so it is noted that the lesion most likely to recur after segmental resection are those over 5 cm so more than 5 cm will have a chance of recurrence even after the segmental resection so chemotherapy we know uh, we do chemotherapy uh, using uh, platinum agents uh, we can we can use cyclophosphamide cisplatin winblastin and electrocautery is uh, another method and we have also radiation therapy so we have finished amyloblastoma it was a very lengthy session because it has various classification uh, classification based on uh, clinical uh, nature and the histological type then we had seen the pathogenesis the clinical features the radio features and the histological type unicystic uh, and its detailed and various treatment options investigation so amyloblastoma is a or endogenic tumor mm, and one of the most common or endogenic tumor it is uh, along with CEOT and AOT, calcifying epithelial or pinbock tumor and adenomatoid or endogenic tumor, amyloblastoma. So these are a very common question, a commonly asked essay question, uh, CEOT, AOT and amyloblastoma. So I'll come up with a new session on dentistry and more. Thank you.